<laughs> I'm going to leave that in. Hello, humans. Welcome back. Uh, it's been a while. I was listening to a podcast earlier today um, that led me to write this article <laughs> down at the beach this morning after a swim. And I, I just wanted to go over it because I think this um, this is a very important subject for Bitcoin, which is the, the question of how does Bitcoin hedge against inflation? Um, and so the thing that got me when I was driving around earlier was this moment in this podcast. It's actually quite an interesting podcast. They talk about various narratives in Bitcoin. Um, but one Super of simple just, understanding yeah. of what it is and not worry about all this because... Do we really want tens of millions of people arguing about this, or 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 we pass well, that? Look, no, they have to. They, well, but they have to exist. in <laughs> this is just sort of the front of house, back of house argument, right? It's like you give somebody a menu and they have to order food, and then the the kitchen has to deliver the food, right? Yeah. There has to be. Uh, so in this case, uh, you're correct that you know Bitcoin is at a level now where we've manufactured an argument that is cohesive and that that people are buying into. Uh huh. Uh, but again, like that argument needs to have some relationship to the actual technology. So when I was here before, I made a joke that I never, uh, never elaborated on. But when I sat down, I said, "Oh, like people think that Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. That that's ridiculous. Ha ha." And we never talked about it. But again, that's sort of narrative where it's like, "Is that true?" Like, I mean, well, it clearly hasn't worked out in the short term. That that's and it's clear in that in, in hyperinflation areas that Bitcoin is not even really you know, being widely used for that use case. So it's and, only an inflation hedge if it beats inflation for you. Right. So there. So I'll just stop there. Sorry, I probably could have queued that up a little bit better. I thought it was in the right spot. But the the idea was that somehow Bitcoin hasn't worked as an inflation hedge. And I think the what I believe the framing to be there is we're starting to see very high inflation prints now. The economy, which let's remember are lagging indicators of inflation that we've been feeling for some time. Um, and that Bitcoin isn't going up now to adjust to that. I, I think that that framing is is incorrect. It's not how an inflation hedge works. So I wrote an article today to, to say, this is how I believe an inflation hedge works. It's more like inflation insurance. And like all good insurances, you have to buy it before the event occurs to get the benefits of the insurance like if you go and buy storm insurance after a storm it's it's going to be expensive and it's not really going to pay out so so this is this was the point of today's article and i just wanted to go over a few of the the points so that was the the framing was that like oh look bitcoin isn't working as an inflation hedge we've got inflation why isn't it going up you see this quite a lot what online the the, the thesis that i'm going to lay out is the simple dot points here i'm just going to go for it so inflation is a monetary phenomenon. It's the expansion of the monetary supply and more money chasing the same amount of goods and services that causes the price of goods and services to go up. It's a supply demand imbalance with money and stuff on one end. So there's two, two main causes are too much money, too little stuff is what's gonna cause inflation. So I think the inflation that we're seeing right now that's playing out is actually the long run effect of all of the fiscal spending that was done throughout 2020 and early 2021. Now, this is really, when I say the fiscal spending, it's the money that was spent directly into the economy. Uh, the, the economy that matters here is the US economy, just because it's the biggest economy on the block. It's the thing that drives a lot of the inflation, deflation globally. It's all about the dollar. Now, point number three, contrary to quantitative easing, I've got a, a, some statements on QE at the end, which are maybe a little bit radical. But um, QE isn't really expansion of the money supply. It's more akin to just paying off banks after they've already spent a bunch of money they never had. I would personally equate it more to theft <laughs> and then letting them off the hook. But I'll, I'll go into that another time. Um, number four is the, the real world goods and services are actually many degrees away from, you know, just in that capital production process of like, you know, widget number one is built used to build widget number two, three, and four, and then food at the end of that, you know, or there's a bunch of inputs to your food cycle, and then there's a plant, a season of growing, and then there's the, the food, and then there's the food that you get, which is often many months or even years later from a flesh frozen process. So there's, there's a big time dilation effect going on here from 
input costs increasing through to output costs increasing. So it does take time for inflation and things like that to show up. So we, the stuff that we're seeing now is the stuff that was baked into the cake a year or two ago. Now, Bitcoin versus a US dollar is a highly liquid market all over the world that is probably like the freest market that we have in the world right now. You know, there's no stops on it. it there's no circuit breakers. It doesn't get shut down if it gets too volatile. It gives you a very quick and very accurate view of sentiment of what's going on in the world. Now, my view is that the, the, the run of late 2020 was really the pricing in of the inflation from the various fiscal spending packages that were coming through the US Senate. And most notably, it was all about the infrastructure bill, which I think was supposed to be around the three trillion mark, and maybe it was more, and the Build Back Better bill, which was supposed to be around $10 trillion. And what you saw around about a year ago was that both of those bills really struggled to get through. So even before the infrastructure bill was completed, they introduced the Build Back Better one and the infrastructure bill was already getting neutered and it had gone from about three trillion down to about one trillion. It was really difficult to understand what was coming through. I'm I'm, I'm not good that great at US politics. I'm pretty sure the Build Back Better one was completely holed up as well. And you really had this neutered spending bill that came out of it. Whereas whilst we might have been expecting about $15 trillion of new money getting printed into existence and then handed out into the real economy, it was actually closer to about two. So like, yes, it was a lot more, but no, it wasn't what the market was pricing in. And I think this is why you're seeing these wild swings in the price at the moment with Bitcoin is trying to figure out, well, are we looking at something here where we're going to see a massive supply of the money or are we not? And I think if you think about what's going on in the in the, the political sphere right now, that makes a lot of sense because the US Senate's been basically gridlocked. It's more or less 50-50. And I think is it Joe Manship is one of the guys who's just kind of holding up a lot of the things that are going through. So what I would add is that if you look at what the Bitcoin price is doing at the moment, what it might really be indicating to you, if we can assume that it does front run what then happens in the economy, is it could be indicating a bit of a deflationary bust coming up. The fact that it's not shooting up implies that there's not a lot of sentiment in that space, that there's going to be a lot of fiscal expansion that's coming down the pipe. So potentially there could be more of a bust coming. And I I think that's something you can hear a lot if you listen to a lot of um, macro investing sort of podcasts and things like that. They talk a lot about a bit of a deflationary bust coming and then a liquidity crisis that might be getting set up at the moment. But, you know, do some research on that if that's something that worries you. I would suggest it's worth looking into. Um, so what would change what's going on? Right now, Bitcoin for about a year has pretty much just traded sideways in a big pie, in a big, big channel with lots of volatility. It's gone from a position where it used to be for about two, three years, about 9,000 US dollars and it traded sideways for quite a while and sometimes it was 14 and sometimes it was 10 and sometimes it was six and sometimes it was 10 <laughs> again, but it's largely about 9, 10K. Now it's largely about 40, 40-ish K, maybe a bit more. And I think what you're seeing there is that that was the, the front running of inflation. <laughs> it said, right, we're about to print a lot of money fiscally. I'm gonna become about 400% higher that's where your inflation insurance paid off. But you had to hold Bitcoin before all of that fiscal spending happened. So if you're looking to buy Bitcoin now as an inflation hedge, which I think is a reasonable position or a thing to be thinking about, but you need to be thinking about the inflation that's going to happen from here and what would cause that. I think what would cause that, there's still a lot of um, unfunded liabilities. There's a lot of spending issues that are coming the way in the US. So it's, But it's more about politically, how does the US spend money if it's got a split Senate and it can't agree to any new fiscal spending. So what you'd be looking for is what changes that dynamics. So obviously the US midterms coming up, if there was a clear democratic sweep and they gained a lot more power in the Senate, then I think you would see Bitcoin take off. That's not what the polls are looking at at the moment. I think it could be that it goes a lot more Republican, in which case we could see a lot more things um, held up and you'd have a lot more sideways action, I think, frankly, in Bitcoin. Um, there are some things that could do that, though. Like maybe there's a, a cross part of something that everybody agrees with. Maybe there's, there is a large liquidity meltdown in the market and that could cause 
immediate spending, which ha- which has happened, you know, every time there's been a been a bubble burst recently, or it could be something like war. War is uh, the sort of thing that people cross parties lines for. So if you saw the U.S. more purposely enter the war against Russia, then I think that would uh, that could also be a trigger. Um, now I think in this article I to talk about is a tale of of four Peters and I've only done three so far, which were the two on the podcast plus myself. Uh, the final Peter is like, this was the chart I was just almost waiting for to see. There was part of um, Peter Thiel's keynote at the Bitcoin 2022 conference that I, I, I was watching this morning. And it just shows very nicely, I think, the front running of inflation by Bitcoin and how it works. And as you see, Bitcoin takes off in the late... 2020 before we start to see these price hikes coming in now remember the inflation indicators you're going to be read are lagging indicators they're looking at inflation from previous months and how it's built over time bitcoin is a very open free market in which we can express sentiment we'd expect bitcoin to go first so as i was saying earlier i think the the takeaway here is that you've got to remember that if you're looking at bitcoin as an inflation hedge it's inflation insurance it means that you buy it before the inflation don't wait for inflation and then expect to be able to get the benefits of it. It's only going to work if there's more inflation coming. There are good reasons to think that more inflation is coming, but there are also good reasons to think that we could be entering a highly deflationary period where there's just a lack of liquidity all around and that prices may have to readjust. So that's I don't usually like to talk about price. My view is if you just buy Bitcoin every day for 10 years, you're going to be quite happy. But anyway, I'll, I will leave it there for now. So I'd just like to say, please like and subscribe. Please like head to the, head to the newsletter, bitcoinforhumans.com and subscribe there as well if you want to get this um, analysis in your inbox. Might do a few more videos. I, want to, <laughs> I promise to the bottom of this article, I'll do a whiteboard video on uh, what I actually think QE is and why I don't think it's in any way inflationary, but why I think you should be very much against it, which I think I'll... I'll add, but yep, like and subscribe and I'll see you all soon. So bye-bye.